JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for December the 7th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against uh, most of the other major currencies on Monday during the Asian session on Tuesday. It gained only versus uh, JPY and CHF while it was found virtually unchanged against the Euro. The greenback underperformed versus uh, the Aussie, the Canadian dollar, the British pound and the Kiwi in that order. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the other safe havens, yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked currencies, Aussie, Kiwi, and Looney, and lately the pound, suggests that the markets turn to risk on trading yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, uh, major EU and US indices were a sea of green, with the positive appetite rolling into the Asian session today. The driver behind the improvement in, uh, in the broader market sentiment was once again headlines surrounding the coronavirus and the new Omicron, the Omicron uh, variant. On Saturday, a South African health official said that despite higher hospital admissions among children due to the new variant, infections, infections have been milked. U.S. infectious disease official Anthony Fauci added more credence to that view, telling CNN that it does not look like there's a great degree of uh, severity. It seems that uh, co coronavirus remains on the, front, on the front page of investors' agenda. More headlines suggesting that the Omicron variant is not as severe as, uh, as, severe as initially thought, would encourage market participants to add more risk uh, to their portfolios. However, we stick to our guns that we will not call for a long, uh, for a long-lasting recovery yet. Yes, the fact that more officials uh, reassure the world uh, tells us um, tells us uh, more positive uh, than we were last week. However, until we get formal and justified answers from the World Health Organization, we prefer to maintain some cautiousness. Anything that comes in contrast with the latest reassuring headlines could result in further stress and anxiety and thereby another round of uh, risk aversion. This means that equities could, uh, could turn south again with investors seeking shelter to safe havens like the yen, the franc and the US dollar. At the same time, risk-linked currencies like the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Looney could come under selling interest. Now, despite the Aussie being the best performer yesterday, we believe that it could turn, um, uh, it could turn uh, as uh, the main loser uh, in case the outlook deteriorates. The reason is uh, the monetary policy divergence of the RBA with the central banks of the other uh, risk-linked currencies. The RBNZ has already begun lifting rates, while the Bank of Canada is expected to do so in coming months. On the contrary, overnight, the RBA maintained its policy unchanged and reiterated uh, the view that they are unlikely to touch the hike button next year. They hinted again that this could happen in 2023. Now, taking that into account, taking that into account we would expect Aussie to be among uh, the currency pairs that will suffer the most in case market sentiment deteriorates again. Now, as for today's events, the only releases on the calendar worth mentioning are Eurozone's second estimate of GDP for the third quarter, which is expected to confirm its initial estimate of 2.2% quarter over quarter, as well as the US and Canadian trade data. The US uh, deficit is expected to have narrowed uh, decently, while Canada's surplus is forecast to have increased. Canada's IV PMI for November is also coming out, but no forecast is available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. 
For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.